officials and human rights organizations continue to blame each other in the aftermath of this fire in Johannesburg. Our reporters this afternoon are continuing to bring you the very latest on this tragedy and of course its aftermath as more analysis is done and people are trying to really make sense of what happened. Senior reporter Avi Wemtila this afternoon is also part of the team that's monitoring the latest developments. He's on the ground with us with a number of, uh, of, of, of stakeholders that he's been talking to including the MEC uh, for social development in Gauteng and a member of the board of Jewish, uh, the Jewish board of deputies. Good Good afternoon, uh, Aviwe. Uh, it's been a very busy time, I guess, for anybody in Johannesburg who's concerned about uh, what happened in the CBD yesterday morning. 74 people later dead. They're coming from all over different parts of Southern Africa, including, of course, some of our own nationals here who've perished in that fire. Trying to make sense of it all still today. Trying to make sense of it is the case, brought down. Uh, but it's very heartwarming to see the different humanitarian aid that's coming in. We have the SA Jewish Board of Directors, your gift of the givers, and many other NGOs that are lending out their hand. I am uh, some 10 or so minutes away drive from the actual building that was engulfed in flames. And earlier on, I was speaking to the High Commission of Tanzania, telling us that at least 150 of their people uh, used to reside there. We know that uh, three of them are in hospital, and they believe that five of them lost their life uh, in that fire. Uh, different aides are coming in, and uh, when I got the latest update here, I was told that at least 53 women are being sheltered in this particular shelter, as well as at least around 51 uh, men. Just to get the latest now, I am joined by the Social Development uh, MEC in Bali. Shope. Thank you for joining us uh, at ENCA. I understand that you've been briefed on terms of uh, the latest and what's happening around uh, the aid that's coming in. How many people do we have in this particular shelter? Currently, we're looking at 101. Um, the facility can take 140, but you know that we have two others that are located in Fairway and in Hillbro. So this is the one that we've got here in Bears Valley, and we're housing them. Um, a lot of them still don't want to leave the incident um, because, as you know, Amanding Mabe have lost their valuables, they've lost their loved ones. So many of them don't want to leave as yet um, until they get some answers. So in the morning, we started there just to communicate with those that are on that side to inform them about the services that we are providing this side because they're better off this side. Um, but we understand. I mean, it's not easy to lose people and you want to know what has happened to them. So a lot of them feel that they should spend more time on the other side, So which is fine. And we're taking some of our services to them so that in terms of warm meals, at least they must have something to eat. But on this side, we've, I mean, we've got so much assistance that has come on board. We've got our doctors on board. Our social workers are here for psychosocial services. Um, they're getting warm meals through our NPOs. We've got various private sector partners, various organizations who've come on board, and they're giving your dignity packs. And these would be where your toiletry, like your toiletry packs. Um, they've got food that's given. They've got a shelter and also um, a proper place where they can be able just to, to sleep and rest um, in the meantime. There's other services that we're looking on bringing on board, like Home Affairs, um, since a lot of them would have lost their docu valuable documentation. You know that is a, a huge impact, particularly on those that rely on grants. They need that type of documentation. Uh, I was sitting earlier with a young girl. She's got a six-weeks-year-old baby, and he's here with us. Um, and she was saying that she doesn't have any documentation with us. So we're fast-tracking those type of services, and that's really what we want to do at this point. Mm, and you mentioned the two other shelters. I know one in Hillbro. Uh, do you have numbers of how many people are housed there, or what's the latest in that regard? Yeah. Currently, we've got 60 in the one, and there's about 40 in the other. So, I mean, combined, and we've got 101 this side. So you can see that we're still just below the 200 mark, um, but like I indicate, there's far more that are on the other side, still in Marshalltown, who want to reside there um, until they get some sense of what has happened to their loved ones. We're seeing different high commissions coming in here. Yeah. Malawian High Commission came in, Tanzanian High Commission a bit earlier, saying that they believe five of their people passed away and they need assistance from government. Are you having those conversations on how you're going to help uh, these different countrymen uh, even bury their people back home? So you'll know that the Minister of Social Development was here with us early in the morning, Minister Zulu, and part of the things that she had indicated was that she was going to speak to her counterparts at national level so that they begin to have those engagements, particularly home affairs, so they're able to have the engagements, um, and DERCO, um, so they're able to have the engagements with the 
the various countries where the affected are coming from so that we can see how do we make sure that we deal with you know the transportation as it, as it relates to those that have passed on um, there's obviously other issues that are going to come to play those who um, still need to deal with their paperwork etc but those are like I'm saying I mean for our point we're dealing with this from a humanitarian point of view so for us it's about making sure that everybody were able to assist they must have the basics um, and that's why we're dealing with issues around food making sure they're healthy those who've been injured we've got doctors on board and they're able to assist them in that regard and the other departments are coming on board and dealing with their aspects mm, and i know uh, this is just a temporary measure but are there longer term plans especially from social development in helping to even stop such fires from happening we do know there are many such buildings around johannesburg and the conditions we told there's shacks inside those buildings which are definite health hazards themselves are there preventative measures Apologies for that. We just lost uh, that signal there to Avium Dila. I don't know if it will be re-established anytime soon while he's speaking there to the MEC for social development in the province of Gauteng. He was also going to be interviewing a member of the Board of Jewish Deputies, but we'll have to leave it there for now. We will continue.